point she begged to go back. Despite the great danger, she got through. She had lost everything, her home, her position, her books, her salary, her pension, even her native language. She had been cut off from her work just at the time when she was leading the field and was on the brink of a major scientific discovery. No matter the privations she suffered, Lisa was still thinking of physics. Amazingly, she and Han were able to collaborate by letter. I hope, my dear Otto, that after 30 years of work together and friendship in the Institute, that at least the possibility remains that you tell me as much as you can about what is happening back there. Lisa was invited by an old student friend to spend Christmas on the west coast of Sweden. Her nephew, Otto Robert Frisch, who was also a physicist, came to join her there. Aunt? 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 Lisa, how are you, my dear? Merry Christmas, Aunt. I need your help. Come on, let's go out. <laughs> but I was hoping you'd help me. Back in Berlin, Hahn was getting strange results. He found no evidence to suggest that bombarding the uranium nucleus with neutrons had caused it to increase in size. In fact, his experiments seemed to be contaminated with radium, a smaller atom. He desperately needed Lisa's expert analysis. From afar, she was starting to suspect that something very different was happening in their experiment. Hahn and Strassmann are getting some strange results with the uranium work. Really? A couple of months ago, Hahn told me that they were finding radium amongst the uranium products. We are looking for a much bigger element, and here we're finding something much smaller. I urged Hahn to check again. It couldn't be radium. And now he writes to me and tells me that it's not radium, it's barium. The dead's even smaller. Exactly. Khan is sure that it's another error, but I don't know anymore. It is at least possible that barium is being produced. So Han still needs you to interpret the data. It is my work too, you know. Exactly. Well, I can't be there, can I? Come on, let's walk. Surely he's made a mistake, hasn't he? He hasn't done what you told him to. Oh, my darling Robert, he may not be a brilliant theorist, but oh, he's too good a chemist to get this wrong. If you imagine a drop of water, a big drop, it's unstable, on the verge of breaking apart. It turns out that a big nucleus like uranium is just like that. Now, for four years, Meitner and Hahn and all other physicists had thought that if you pump more neutrons into this nucleus, it'll just get bigger and heavier. But suddenly, Meitner and Frisch, out in the midday snow, realized that this nucleus might just get so big that it would split in two. If the nucleus is so big that it has trouble staying together, then couldn't just a little tiny jog from a neutron and... Yes, but if the nucleus did split, the two halves would fly apart with a huge amount of energy. Where's that energy going to come from? Well, we worked out that the mutual repulsion between two nuclei would generate about 200 million electron volts. But something has to supply that energy. Wait, let me do a packing friction calculation. The two nuclei 
are lighter than the original nucleus of the uranium by about one-fifth of a proton in mass. What? So some mass has been lost. Einstein's e equals mc squared. If we multiply the loss mass by the speed of light squared, we get... ...200 million electron volts. He's split the atom. No, no, no. You've split the atom. an amazing discovery. Of course, in the laboratory, we're talking about tiny amounts of uranium and correspondingly tiny amounts of energy. But the point is that the amount of energy released was relatively large and that came from the mass of the uranium itself. The energy released was entirely consistent with Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. Meitner and Frisch published the discovery of what they called nuclear fission to great acclaim. But betrayal awaited them. Otto Hahn was under pressure from the Nazi regime to write his Jewish colleague out of the story. He alone was awarded the 1944 Nobel Prize for the discovery. In his speech, he barely mentioned the leading role of Meitner. Bizarrely, even after the war, Hahn maintained that it was he and not Meitner who had discovered nuclear fission. Lisa Meitner was betrayed, refused a Nobel Prize she deserved, but her work was to have a far greater legacy. With E equals MC squared, she may have only broken apart a handful of atoms, but the genie was out of the bottle. Lisa Meitner had shown that Einstein's E equals mc squared was true. Energy could be released from matter. But neither of these pure scientists had foreseen the consequences of their discoveries. In 1942, an intense effort to build an atom bomb was begun. All over America, secret installations sprang up under the code name, the Manhattan Project. Meitner was asked to join the Manhattan Project, and she refused. She refused to have anything to do with the atomic bomb. But Robert Frisch was different. He was an important member of the team because he was convinced of the need to beat the Nazis in a nuclear arms race. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki demonstrated the terrible destructive power of E equals MC squared. A few pounds of uranium and plutonium were detonated, splitting apart their atoms and releasing vast amounts of energy. While the pure inquisitiveness of the world's most gifted scientists ironically had brought humanity a weapon of mass destruction, the equation is now used to answer the biggest question of all. Where did we come from? Today's generation of physicists see E equals mc squared in action every day. In huge accelerators like these, atomic particles are fired at almost the speed of light. As they travel, more and more energy is pumped into them. Just as Einstein predicted, they grow.